All right, I can do this. I kept twisting it until it started locking itself again. I love that. So before people think that I am congratulating myself a little preemptively, um, I did check the Kickstarter. No, I am not fully funded yet, but no, I don't think that I am um, celebrating prematurely because this is a launch party. It's like when you launch a ship and you bash the bottle of wine or whatever against it. Whether that ship floats or if it sinks, you still get to have the celebration for the launch. So even if this ship sinks and does not hit its goal, I'm still gonna have sparkling water. Very sparkling water. Ah, oh. hey folks, how's everybody doing? Actually, you know what? I gotta reposition this thing a little bit. Sorry, hate to do this to you. And I'm shift that there and up a little. That's better. I think I'm more centered now. Yes. You also aren't seeing as much of the puppet, which as much as I enjoy him is, he's a little unsettling, <laughs> just standing there going. So best, best to not have him uh, be overly visible. But anyways, let's see. Uh, where's the hull of the ship for that water to be smashed off? Um, in my belly. Ah, that water is a worrying color. Well, you know, we don't have great uh, filtration where I live. How's tricks and does it really need to be a launch party <laughs> for sparkling water? That's true. I could drink this regardless, but, you know, I... Uh, this was fun to pick up. I haven't had water this sparkling in a while. So, you know, it's nice. At least by itself. I've had this kind of sparkling water mixed with things. I doubt that sparkling water. Yeah, why would you doubt me? Did I read that comment already? I might've read that comment already. Boy, I'm off to a good start. Uh, drink more water. <laughs> I plan to. Oh, uh, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm still fine-tuning and adjusting this, and I am just going to be a little bit annoying about it. And do that. This, yes, cool. I think, Yes. Um, what do I think of the Goonies? Uh, it's fun. I enjoyed it as a kid. Not sure how well it holds up. Uh, what's the Kickstarter? The Kickstarter is for my novel, um, Dreams of Fire, and it's to help fund, uh, illustrations, because for some reason I decided to make it like a light novel and have, um, illustrations across it. So, yeah. <laughs> which character in your book do you like the most, and which was the most fun to write? Um... The character who I like the most is probably, um, there's a character who, ah, uh, I'm trying to think of how best to explain him because, like, his name doesn't get dropped for a while because he's kind of paranoid and he doesn't want to give out a lot of information. But he, he comes into the story and he's kind of mysterious, but the, the more you get to know him, you get to learn him, learn about him. He's just very closed off, but not like in the cool and like, I'm so dark and edgy and no one can know me. Like, no, it's not that. Dude's got damage. I like him a lot. As far as the most fun to write, towards the end of the book, there is a, um, there's a character who's a, who's a boat captain. He was a lot of fun, like to the point that I, I kind of wish I could have figured out a way to bring him into the plot sooner so that I could write more of him. I really enjoyed writing him and his interactions with his crew. And a lot of that a lot of that stems from the fact that what I enjoy writing most is dialogue. It's what comes most naturally to me and his dialogue was a lot of fun to write. I actually thought I'd miss the stream tonight cuz I was at the pub. I mean staying at home, being way too productive. Yes, 
Be sure you hydrate while you're staying at home being productive. The Goonies was made in my home state of Oregon. Very cool. How am I? I am doing pretty well, all things considered. Which, which I feel like is the answer that, like, you have to scale for COVID whenever you answer that question. How are you doing? Like, with everything going on, I'm pretty good. <laughs> so tell us the truth. Is that really just water in that glass, or are you drinking something with alky tonight? How dare you? How dare you impugn my honor and imply that this is anything other than crisp, clean, sparkling, slightly suspiciously colored water? Well, I never. Uh, what surprised you most when writing? Um, I was surprised how many things I was able to tie into existing stuff that I already had. Or like how much groundwork I'd laid ended up providing solutions. Like I would find my... <laughs> There's something that I did about midway through the book just because I thought it was cool. And then later in a situation that I wrote... Later on, I realized, oh, I could bring back that thing. And it was funny because the first time somebody wrote a finished draft, they're like, I really like how you set that up and then pay it off later. I'm like, mm, yeah, that was totally what I planned to do. As opposed to just magically realize, oh, crap, I actually have a solution to this situation that I already created <laughs> without intending to reuse it. It's like that's part of the part of the fun, uh, I think, of writing is it is figuring out how to use what you've already got in play to complete the work. Um, because, you know, I, I, for me, I don't get as much thrill like thinking up something new to bring in. Like, I like looking at the pieces and playing going, ooh, I know what I can do with this. And that's, that's the most fun sort of discovery part of the process for me. Where are we? Didn't catch the Kickstarter is about illustrations. Do you have them but need money to commission? Basically. So I have some illustrations and you see examples of that in the Kickstarter pitch video. Um, actually, did I? Hold on. Did I actually get the link to the Kickstarter on here? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Did I? No. Oh, for God's sake. Give me a second. It should be in the description, and I don't think it is. Um, so, yeah, the primary thing that the Kickstarter is funding is illustrations. I do have some already, so you can see examples of what they are going to be like as far as style um, goes. But um, that is that is the main expense, and I only have, like, I don't know, seven done uh, so far. So there's a lot more that I would like to be able to do. And it's also helping fund um, stuff like getting a, a cover professionally designed, getting a world map uh, professionally done, and, uh, and, and things like that. So there, uh, there is all that sort of stuff um, as well. But the primary thing that it is funding is the, uh, the illustrations. And let me get back to where I was. Dang thing. Hold on, give me a second. <sighs> Come on, here we go. And I'm back. Um, because I've, I've already got an editor who I'm working with and I'm in the middle of the editing process. So last time I ran a, um, a Kickstarter, the editor was the main thing that the Kickstarter was funding, but in this case, that's already paid for. Uh, if you compared the book to another for flavor, what would it be? Oh, God. Um, I don't know because most of my main influences weren't other books. Um, like tone and world feel wise, my go-to is Final Fantasy VI uh, for overall vibe of the thing. Uh, will Hamilton replace Next to Normal as your favorite musical? No. No, it won't. I do like Hamilton quite a bit, though. It's a lot of fun. Um, what are your thoughts on The NeverEnding Story? 
Well, I've never read the book. Um, I've only ever seen the movie. Actually, I've seen the first two movies. There's three in an animated series. Woof. Um, but I, it's, it is dated in a lot of ways, but I think it's, it's just got that very fervent imagination that I like from a lot of that era of children's entertainment from the 80s. So I, I do enjoy it. Um, there's some weird stuff that goes on. Like, not just like the normal sort of, ooh, this is weird and imaginative. Like the, like the, the guardian sphinxes at this gate that Atreyu has to go through have boobs. And he beats it by running. Like, really? He was the first person to ever think to run instead of saunter? Okay. Like, there's some weird stuff in that movie, but it's pretty good. I'm also enjoying some water, and the only problem is it tastes a little like Jack Daniels and Coke. How strange. You may want to get your tap checked. That's not a reason to stop drinking it, though. Uh, have you got a chance to listen to the new Monsters Old Doctor's Big Finish yet? No, I don't have that one. Um, I do have a number of Big Finish that I have yet to get to, but I'm trying to catch up on um, commissions before I delve too much back into Big Finish, unless somebody wants to commission me to do some Big Finish, that's always an option. Evening, I was just watching the Batman the Animated Series till I saw this was going on. Oh, I am sorry to pull you away from that because that is a good, good show. But uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, what were your inspirations for the story or the idea of the book? I mean, the thing is you need to realize how long I've been working on this thing. So me trying to trace back my inspirations, I, I actually kind of can't because at this point I've been working on the thing to varying degrees for so damn long that I couldn't possibly, you know, reverse engineer and backtrack most of these because the first conception of what would eventually become this book I had when I was 20. That was 18 years ago. And, um... Ooh, excuse me. And, yeah, I've been working on this for a long time, so a lot of things have probably seeped in over time um, as, as I've been working on it. I didn't have, like, a primary, ooh, I want it to be like this sort of thing, though. I had a long list of things I didn't want it to be, <laughs> um, which is not necessarily the best way to approach a book because... Uh, or any project, because you should know what it's going to be as opposed to just what it isn't. But I think in the process of avoiding certain things, I, I managed to find what it was uh, as I went through it. I love when that happens in my stories. I've accidentally given myself the solution to my scenario. It makes me feel like the doctor, if I'm being honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. I finally finished Angel. I did enjoy it, but I have to disagree with you. I think Buffy was the better show. Like, I know that most people don't agree with me. And the thing is, a lot of it for me just has to do with overall tra trajectory as a series. Buffy had its ups and downs, and I personally feel that each season of Angel was better than the last. Yes, even season four. And season five is phenomenal. So, uh, Jurassic Park or Jumanji? Jurassic Park. Look, the original Jumanji, uh, Jumanji I've got nostalgia for, but I... Mm. It's, it's just, it's just kind of there. It's fine. It's functional. Uh, let's see. I get that. For what I'm working on at the moment, I find so much uh, comes out in writing. Uh, since it's a play, it's mostly dialogue. And it's true how fun some people can be to write. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, I missed the question. Somebody, um, oh, Oh, somebody asked how much I plan. Not, not a ton. I don't outline. I do, however, know how it's going to end. Um, and I have to, because if I don't know my final destination, I lose steam if I don't know where I'm going. So it, if I, I don't sit down and, and outline every major beat. Um, and I don't, I don't like do family tree. I, I don't do that level of planning. I know where I'm going. I have an idea of certain things that I want to hit along the way, but how I'm going to connect A to B to C to D, I don't know. I find that out as I go. Um, but I do have to know the, the um, destination, otherwise I, I just will never finish. Do you play any instruments? No. When I was in grade school, I played the trumpet. 
I, well, I'm sorry. Actually, technically, I played the cornet. But they put me in the trumpet section because nobody plays a cornet uh, at that age. It was, uh, it was my grandfather's cornet because um, he played professionally. So, yeah. Uh, I have not touched it in decades. I'm sure I would be terrible now. If I was lucky, I could get some sound out of it. I don't remember the fingering for anything anymore. And that sounded really dirty. I'm sorry, it's what it's called. Uh, what if you were to do a sketch in your doctor costume where you were gener... What if you were to do a sketch in your doctor costume where you were to regenerate from drinking too much water? <laughs> the doctor has a hangover so bad they regenerate. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that idea, I'm not going to lie. But then there's uh, the people that feel genuinely uncomfortable to write because they're awful. I don't, I don't have any characters in the book that are people I don't like. Like, even the villains, I know why they're doing what they're doing, and I gave them what I feel are understandable, if not relatable, motivations. So I didn't, I didn't have anyone to write who was just an atrocious human being across the board. I have a lot of very flawed people. Some of them are really flawed. But, like, I get why they are doing what they're doing. So I, I, that was not something that I... Uh, ran into. What actually is your favorite musical? My favorite musical is a show called Next to Normal, which if you're not a theater nerd, you might not know. It is a story about a family coping with mental illness. Fun! What are your thoughts on The Fox and the Hound? I have not watched that movie in ages. I remember it being vaguely cute. Wasn't even one that I watched much as a kid. I think I even had it. I didn't watch it that much. Kind of annoying how I thought I'd created some nice costumes for some characters in a series I'm going to make only to realize they look like discount Drusilla and Spike. Look, Drusilla and Spike themselves are not super original looks. Spike is basically Billy Idol and Drusilla is kind of your standard, vaguely Victorian era Carmilla type. Like, you're allowed to recycle them. They were recycled when Drew and Spike did it. It's fine. Chill out. Like, that's, that's kind of a big thing. Like, if you get hung up on not being original, you're never going to get anything written. The, the goal should be to, is to take familiar things and reconfigure them and put them to use in a way that is entertaining for people. But do not get hung up in the idea like, uh, like this is part of the reason that I actually don't dwell too much on where my influences and my inspirations come from because I know myself and I know I am liable to fall into the trap of once I identify an influence, I'll go, oh God, I basically just did that. Oh no, now it's not original. And like, I know intellectually that's, a stupid hang up to have and counterproductive, but it's still there. So yeah, no, if they look like Drew and Spike, so what? Uh, if you dock my pay, can I get a copy of the book early? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk offline, Joel. Um, just want to say that I am loving the Farscape podcast. I will now pop some bubbly and join you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I'm glad that folks are, are enjoying that. Oh, hey, Stephen. Um, can you talk about the mytho about what mythologies inspired your book? Okay, so the, um, fantastical elements are largely Celtic inspired. So that sort of fairy lore, because you have pixies and red caps and dryads and sort of that, um that sort of Celtic old British um, mythology with a couple of exceptions. Cause I've also got a, a Huldra, which is a Scandinavian um, mythological beast. Um, I, I had a lot of fun working with the Huldra. Like not a lot of people know about those. And like I, all of these are tweaked in, in small ways um, to, to accommodate what I wanted to do with them um, a little bit. But uh, hopefully not in a way that is, like, 
why would you even call it that? Hopefully I didn't take anything that far. But uh, those were sort of where I pulled a lot of uh, inspiration from for the, for the background mythology. Just be Well, largely just because that's the stuff that I actually know a little bit. Here's, don't tell anybody, but I suck at research. I'm not good at it. I, 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 I chalk it up to the ADHD. I have a hard time sitting down and focusing and doing real thorough proper research. So what is more useful for me is to pull from stuff that I already have, an, have some kind of knowledge base on because it's something I was already inherently interested in. If I try and sit down for the purposes of research, I will burn out. Um, and so like on the occasions when I do research, even for a video, like it's actually hard <laughs> for me. That's like difficult stuff. Um, although it was fun looking up, um, you know, lesser known uh, fae creatures and fairy stories, um, you know, to see if anything sort of clicked and inspired me to, to do something that I might not have done otherwise. Uh, world map, how uh, to avoid the, oh, it's Tolkien's map. Don't worry about it. Come up with your design. Don't copy his geography. Like, the thing is, the only thing that I would worry about versus Tolkien is don't copy the geography and don't, and, you know, avoid, you know, the same um, sort of specific imagery. But, like, the general look of the map, yes, it's going to look like Tolkien's map. They all do. That's fine. I do that with themes. Uh, the looking back on my early writing includes bits in my main collection. I see so much depression and anxiety. See, that's funny because a couple of years ago, sort of looking through stuff that I'd written, including an early draft of this book and short stories that I'd finished and, my, and the play that I wrote and a bunch of other stuff, and I realized every single thing that I have ever written is in some way about things in flux and things in transition and things falling in the middle between two states of being. I cannot possibly imagine why that's a theme that keeps popping up in my work. You've been kidnapped, but the last person you saw on a TV show is trying to rescue you. Who was rescuing you? Oh, what was the last thing I watched? I think, I think the last thing I watched was Farscape. So that means that the Farscape crew would be coming for me. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was the last thing because um, Jesse and I recorded yesterday and I haven't watched anything today. Whoop. That is some... Um, Bubbly water. Uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park well, World has a new animated series coming out on Netflix. Yeah, I saw that. Whatever. Hi, Vera. I have a question about the Turf Wars essay. J.K. Rowling said she is interested in MS, which is twice as likely to be developed by both cis and trans women as cis men. Do you have an opinion? No. No, I do not. I'm not in the mood to have a J.K. Rowling opinion tonight. <laughs> With all respect. Is it weird that I like Tomorrow Never Dies more than GoldenEye? Yes. It's fine. That's totally fine. But yes, it's weird. Uh, what are your thoughts on Child's Play from 1988? I've actually never seen it. Only um, Child's Play movie I've seen is Bride of Chucky. Which was fun. Oh, actually, no, I saw Seed of Chucky, but I barely remember that one. I liked Bride better. Uh, I showed a sister your dragon in last week's stream and <laughs> got a little jealous. Words of warning, she's on her way with malicious intent. I have a rack of weapons with which to defend my dragon. Don't try it. What am I... 
in best reach of? I would say the axe. Bring it on. Or, you know, don't. Okay. So, whoop. Bang that against stuff. That's always, that's, that's a sign of sobriety, right? Uh, let's see. Where are we? Whoop. Okay. Chad is, Chad is jumping on me. I'm catching up. Uh, uh, whew, I am a ways behind. So apologies on that. Uh, I might try and catch up. I don't think that's going to happen tonight, though. Um, we, are, we are very different. All my characters are flawed and are by far atrocious human beings, but I'm still trying to make them likable. I do each their own in terms of approach. Uh, after the Omegaver Omegaverse essay from Lindsay Ellis, I've wondered how much you dabble in fanfic, reading, or writing past or present. Uh, none. I've never gotten into fanfic. Uh, I couldn't get into reading it because I'm too much of a nitpicker. Um, and I, it, I never felt inspired to write it. And that's not like a, a source of shame. Like, there's nothing wrong with fan fiction. Fan fiction's great. It's, it's, it's a good, healthy thing for a fan community to do, I think. But it's just, it's just never been my jam. I have friends who wrote fanfic. <laughs> I'm not going to name names because I, I don't know if any of them are embarrassed by it. But yeah, no, no shade on fanfic. Do you watch any shows on ABC, NBC, CBS, The CW, Fox, USA, TBS, Comedy Central, HBO, etc.? So you just... <laughs> the only currently airing show that I am watching right now is Lovecraft Country. Reviews over on the break room of geeks. Subscribe to that channel if you have not already. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm, that was a smoothly inserted plug. Nice glide action on that. Um, would you agree that the Tenth Doctor overall is a little overrated? I would agree that the Tenth Doctor is very overrated. Still good. I love Tenant, but he's more than a little uh, overrated, actually. Going back to uni soon. Really hope to get past this writer's block. I've been in for some time. Any tips on coming up with ideas or new premises? Nope. <laughs> Joel, you're talking to someone who launched a Kickstarter for a book that they started conceiving 18 years ago. I have been banging away at the same ideas for an embarrassingly long amount of time. I'm not someone to ask on where to get new ideas from. <laughs> uh... Have you seen the Jekyll and Hyde musical? Only listened uh, to some of the songs, but I think uh, re it really gets the source material. Nope, I never have. No! No, that's not true! I saw... <laughs> At a friend's house a few years ago, they had... They had the David Hasselhoff version. So if the thing's any good, I couldn't appreciate it because I was laughing at Hoff overacting. It was a great time, but it wasn't good. I put together an OC cosplay for my own incarnation of the meddling monk. It's basically an old and American preacher type look. The hat was from a V for Vendetta mask set. Ooh. Very curious to see that, actually. If they casted you as the doctor, would you do it? I mean, they shouldn't. I'm not British, and I mean, I suppose with professional coaching, I could fake a decent British accent, but setting that issue aside, fuck yes. <laughs> like, dear God, yes. Any reality show guilty pleasures? Hmm. I don't know if I've ever owned up to this before. So I don't watch reality TV shows now. There was a period in time where I was being paid to write 
about Jersey Shore. And I liked it. I liked that show. Oh, boy. It wasn't the only thing I was being paid to write about. I was also writing about House while that was airing. But yeah, I was professionally writing about Jersey Shore. Uh, my only saving grace is the site that that was for is now completely gone. So this stuff is scrubbed from the internet. Uh, I'm sorry, but in the words of Buffy, Billy, uh, Billy Idol got his look from Spike. Oh, well, fine. If you're going to be continuity nitpicker about it. Uh, we all suck at research. Oh, good. It's not just me. What characters in your book are you most like and why? So I, I'm not going to name the characters, but there, there are two characters. Neither of them are the lead, but they are the closest to my own direct proxy. And basically one of them behaves the way I would like to think I would behave in the circumstances that they in. The other one behaves the way I suspect I would actually behave in the circumstances that they are in. So I'm kind of split between two. Uh, every so often I check Sondheim is still alive and he is. So yay. Yes. Yes. Yay for Sondheim. Zootopia or Moana? Personal choice Moana. I do think Zootopia is actually a better movie though. Uh... Council of Geeks has pulled to George R.R. R. Martin, but with much better excuse for taking so long to write a book. I'm not sure I actually do have a better excuse, to be honest. <laughs> Last thing I watched was Gotham. My kidnappers are going to have an interesting time. Oh, yeah, especially depending on what season. Uh, is your interest in flux and things arriving in the middle part of the reason Capaldi is your favorite doctor and you once mentioned you like pragmatic heroes? Um... It's probably part of it. I I mean, I enjoy pragmatic heroes because I'm a pragmatic person at the end of the I'm a prag I'm a pragmatist and a consequentialist. I I I do not get hung up on the principle of the thing, and I care much more about the end result than than, you know, being hung up on, you know, purity of, of means to get it. I'm not going to go so far as to say I'm ends justify the means. I'm not. But, like, if there's a goal that I think is worth getting, I'm not going to get excessively hung up on the quote-unquote right way to get us there. So, yeah, I do appreciate that. And I think what a big part of what I appreciate, I appreciate about Capaldi is, is partly that because I love his journey from Series 8 to Series 10. And how he changes over the course of that. Because he has an arc. Which I would argue no other Doctor really has. Certainly not to the extent that he does. Pretty much every other Doctor arrives more or less fully formed. And stays the same. Maybe we as an audience come to better understand them as it goes on during their era. But they don't actually change. I think So I think something like that applies to Tenet. We realize how dark he can go towards the end of his run and how selfish he can be. But that doesn't feel like it's new. It's just something we hadn't seen. Whereas Capaldi actually feels like he changes. And I actually really appreciate that on a lot of levels. To be honest, it's not water. It's apple juice and lemonade. Oh, no, they found me out. Your bubbly water has a very nice head. <laughs> I will leave that comment alone. I do have a lot of middling themes, theming crop up, but because I'm bisexual. That makes sense. Uh, what is your thoughts on The Omen and The Exorcist? I have actually not seen The Omen start to finish. I've seen most of it, like in bits and pieces sporadically over time. Um, I do like The Exorcist. I think it's overrated. Um, there, there are very few older horror movies that I think hold up. That said, my absolute favorite horror movie is from 1978. So, you know, I do think older horror movies can work, but, um, the, the Exorcist is fine. I think a lot of it, 
at the time it came out was shock value. Not like in the generic, ooh, we're gonna have a kid swear away, but just like it pushed the envelope in terms of stuff people hadn't seen on screen before. But by the time I saw it, I was in college when I saw it. And you know, it just, I was like, yeah, that's pretty well done. That was kind of it. I, th I, I honestly think The Omen's a better spectacle than The Exorcist. How would you feel about setting up a table read for your play over Zoom or YouTube or something? <laughs> so my first question is, have you read the play? I would be very curious to find any um, actors willing to do that live and perform those characters under those circumstances. Um, like, I'd be game, but first of all, the, the the video or the stream or whatever I did would get demonetized immediately. So I've talked about it sporadically. The play that I wrote, available on Amazon, buy now, Beat the Rush, um, it's called When She Wakes, uh, published under the name of Vera Wilde. It's an exploration of BDSM. It, <laughs> there's a re the reason I published it was because even though I have inroads with local community theaters in my area, there was no way they were ever going to put this on. If I could have gotten it staged, I would have. But if you're curious, check the play out. It's actually relatively cheap. It's cheaper than my, um, than my other book. Um, so, you know... Give that a read. Leave a review. Hasn't had a review in a little while. That'd be nice. I do think it actually reads pretty well, despite being a play. I would love to see it staged at some point, though. Oh, that would make me so happy. Uh, how was your last book in terms, uh, were you pleased with how it did? Um, I've actually, with Skirting Gender, I've been very happy with it. And it has continued to sell at a fairly steady pace since it came out. Not at, not in high volume, but like it's never completely dropped off, which is really um, gratifying for me to see that. I, I love that. Oh, you know what? I got, uh, I, I have um, questions from the Discord that I need to check. Almost forgot. I've, I've, I've been trying to do that earlier in the stream, especially if, if I'm going to hydrate as much as I have been. So let me just pull those up. I'll be right back, folks. Uh, I've got them set up uh, already. Where did, why is, why is it not? Oh, here we go. So a reminder, the Discord is a Patreon exclusive perk. So join the Council of Geeks Patreon and take part in that. Um, is shipping included in the backing price for physical copies? Um, yes, when you support at a level to get a physical copy, the cost of shipping is um, added to that. So it, and it is higher if it's international shipping. I hate having to do that, but it's the reality of my having to ship these things out. I learned that the hard way with Skirting Gender. I had a couple of volumes that I had to ship outside the U.S., and it it goes a lot really quick. Um, how do you feel about indie short films in general? Any genre of favorite? Uh, what do you look for in a short film? I used to be... Animated shorts are usually my go-to if I'm going to take in short films. Um, that's, that's usually what I like to see. Live-action shorts are... Um, hard for me. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but they they don't grab me as often. Uh, when you select the option to get a drop-down list of country... Oh, sorry. Sorry. They were answering the other question for me. Favorite Darren Aronofsky movie? For me, it's a uh, close tie between Mother and Requiem for a Dream. The Fountain. Hands down, not even close. I still haven't seen Mother, actually. Uh, what is your view on film rating systems? Uh, take, say, the U.S., uh, pretty much a child of any age can be taken to anything unless rated NC-17, it seems, and the U.K. and the U.K. Hard age lines are at 15, usually strong violence and horror, and then 18. 
Um, usually really strong violence or very strong sex, including real but non-pornographic, uh, such as short bus. Short bus. Bush? Hmm. But both classifications can be shown easily in mainstream cinemas. Um... I mean, the U.S. rating system is a mess, but it's because it doesn't actually have uh, hard and firm rules that it follows. It's just the whims of whoever's on the board of the MPAA at the time. And you can't cite precedent for what was allowed in a certain rating in previous years as a reason why you should get, say, a PG-13 and not be labeled an R. So, like, that process is messed up. As far as what you're saying specifically, I actually kind of favor the... UK model where you couldn't take a, a someone under the age of 15 into the um, equivalent of an R-rated movie. Whereas in the US, you can. You can take a kid into anything that is an NC-17 provided they're accompanied by a parent, which I, I don't love. And I especially don't love it because I grew up in that age when... R-rated films were marketed at kids. Like, I grew up um, at a time when kids my age were seeing RoboCop and Terminator 2, and there were toys and massive marketing aimed at us, at kids. And I'm like, these are not kid movies. Well, Terminator 2, arguably, but, you know, RoboCop, what the, what the fuck? Flippin' hell. Ah. I said fuck earlier. Why am I censoring myself now? I don't know. But, yeah. So, so that's it for that. Because uh, I, am, I am now doing a cutoff for the Discord questions. If there are ones that came in after those, I will answer them in the Discord itself. Um, so, now I am even further behind in the chat than I already was. Ha ha! Ha ha! Uh, what did you think of the DS9 episode, The Visitor? I loved it. Tony Todd was so good. Such a heart-wrenching episode. I mean, I've got a review up for it because I was actually commissioned to review that and one other episode of uh, DS9. Um, it was. It was very good. And I love Tony Todd. He's terrific. And it was nice to see him, you know, not have to play creepy because he's, ever since Candyman, that's kind of been the uh, presumption that if you cast Tony Todd, it's casting him to be creepy so it was kind of nice to see him do something other than that um who jeez um wow i am so far behind it's not even funny okay I'm gonna try and not linger as long on some of these questions so uh is it bad that i was on a ferris wheel recently and saw a girl panicking in a pod next to me and said to my godmother loudly you know it's five years since this wheel collapsed yes yes that is bad nope not even gonna mince words uh ever seen the show must go on Ever seen the show must go online videos of Shakespeare plays? I found a complete book of Shakespeare plays so I could read along while watching the videos. No, not familiar with those. So I just pledged $25 to the Kickstarter, but I just noticed that they're cha charging me for shipping too. So yeah, if I chipped in $10 more, could you maybe autograph? Um, I know that the um, the shipping is, is nudging people uh off it a little bit i've seen that come up elsewhere but here's here's what i'll say julie um the i believe it is 35 dollar tier on the patreon which currently allows you to get a copy of a book signed by me once this book is published that'll be an option on that um on that support tier on Patreon, because right now you either get a copy of the play or of Skirting Gender. But once this once this book actually gets published, and I have physical copies in my hand, that will be an option as well. So if you want to get a signed copy for thirty five on the Patreon for thirty for that amount, we'll get you there once it's done and ready. That's sort of the thing with Kickstarter. You do need to realize, oftentimes you are paying slightly more than you would pay once it's available to the public, but that's kind of the nature of crowdfunding um so uh, 
What are your thoughts on it? Chapter one and two. Uh, neither is very good. <laughs> Second one's worse. Uh, neither is great. Uh, speaking of fan fiction, any thoughts on Lindsay Ellis's Omegaverse video? Jesus, that was nuts. I, it was a well done video. Like I knew what Omegaverse was. I was aware. I had heard of it, and I knew some of the ins and outs of it. I didn't know the legal insanity that was going on um, behind the scenes. What is that? Is that? There's something in the bottom of my glass. I don't know what that is. I'm still gonna drink it. Um, been subscribed for a while. Catch any live stream? Live screen? Live stream for, a fir for the first time in a while. Uh, just back up, backed up on Patreon is Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean movies, the most underrated villain ever. Um, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, I like Davy Jones, but I always liked Barbosa more. Like, I loved Barbosa so much in the first Pirates of the Caribbean. And I like Davy Jones, but he's always been overshadowed for me. And it's not his fault. I love Bill Nye. He does great work, but I, I, I can't help it. No, when I say atrocious human being, I mean slaughtering the entire crew of a ship because she's sobering up. Ah, uh, no, I've never written a character like that. Uh, are you reading or have read Accession yet? No, I've actually only just today finished the book that I was commissioned to read prior to Accession. So that is the next one I am starting. By the time you see the next um, live stream, I will have started reading it. Uh, if it wasn't for Doctor Who and Dark Materials, I question why I pay the license fee. <laughs> uh, ever listen to David Tennant's podcast? David Tennant does a podcast with... I haven't. I've heard of it, um, but I've never gotten around to it. See, the thing is, I'm so far behind on the podcast I already listened to that, uh, is it like, this is the one, quite possibly the only major downside of having been laid off from my job Sitting at my job, I listened mostly to podcasts. But the thing is, I don't listen to podcasts when I'm doing stuff here because when I'm working on editing or I'm shooting or whatever, I can't have ambient noise. Like, it's not mindless work. I have to be engaged for me to do it right. Whereas at my job, I would frequently be doing mindless work that I could just have a podcast on. So I've fallen so far behind on podcasts since I was laid off. It's crazy. What are your thoughts on Steven Schwartz? Don't know him. Uh, also, so coming from work, shh, don't tell my manager. Oh, shh, shh. I'm on a water break. I've been working on the same idea since I was 15 or 16. And of course, I'm actually 37. So I do think I've been banging at it as long as you. Yes, Jolie, you and me. Just banging away. Somebody's going to clip that out of context. Son of a bitch. A David Hasselhoff was wonderfully awful, Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, Colleen Sexton was the best thing about that version she played Lucy. I don't, re I don't remember anyone other than Hasselhoff in that. Like, he just created this vortex of suck. It was great. Um, what's the link to your... Farscape podcast again. I've listened to the first four and Jesse's reactions are priceless since she's watching it for the first time. If you just Google Council of Geeks podcast, you'll find it. Also, you can go to the community tab on uh, the Council of Geeks uh, YouTube channel because I post links there as well. Trying to catch up. I'm not going to. Is there a movie or TV show that you hate but everyone else seems to love and vice versa? Um... I, I couldn't get into Rick and Morty. That seems to be the big one that everyone like is in absolute love with. I'm just like, no, it's not for me. Um, as far as something that I love that no one else does, I don't know. There's stuff that I love that no one else remembers, like the Max. Nobody remembers the Max. I adore it. Uh, I recently went to Madame Tussauds in Blackpool, Wax Museum, all for celebrities. Uh, and my God... Uh, Jodie Whittaker is really small. <laughs> uh, 
trying to see. Uh, what's the thesis of we created J.K. Rowling going to be? Is it just going to be that she shouldn't be famous if we didn't buy her stuff? Okay, so dropped a little bit of what one of the videos that I'm planning for next month is going to be, which has a working title of We Created Jodie Whittaker. And no, that's not going to be what it's about. It's going to be much more about how the fandom sort of primed her to quote-unquote ignore the haters and how when she felt attacked by people trying to point out that her beliefs were transphobic, the people that she retreated to were the ones who fed her those talking points in the first place, and it just reinforced their perspective as far as she was concerned. And I'll go into more detail when I get to there. Last thing I watched was Hannibal. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, do you still watch Stranger Things? I mean, it's an odd question because there hasn't been a new season in a while, but yeah, I guess. If you were stuck watching an episode of Doctor Who forever, would you prefer Hellbent or Orphan 55? What are your thoughts on The Dark Crystal? Movie's pretty good. Show is excellent. Uh, I get self-condos about characters I write becoming too self-insert. So I just uh, include traits that give them distance from me. That works. I mean, like, everyone's got a different process, and that's fine. You should try Amaretto and apple juice. It's such a good drink. I actually, I hate Amaretto. I actually hate almond flavor. I like almonds. Anytime I've had anything that's like almond flavored, like amaretto, I hate it. Ah, oh, it's awful. I'm the same way with bananas. I like bananas. I hate banana flavored stuff. Ugh. Have you reached death and heaven at this point? Um, so it won't go up for uh, a while, but yeah, I I shot my I did my rewatch and shot my review for Death and Heaven a while back, actually. Uh, is Halloween 1978 your favorite horror movie? No. Good guess, but no. Uh, I say good guess. I've actually never seen that movie. The audio book I was recording has started being uploaded. My friend uh, is doing fan-made audio books and audio dramas of the old Doctor Who books by Virgin Publishing. Oh, very cool. Uh... Do you remember me asking you ages ago if Missy putting Clara and Twelve together and luring them... Uh, to 3W this way fits into this is all part of my plan trope. I don't know because it's, at least as far as I've gotten in the rewatch, it is not clear that Missy intended the consequences of what happened when um, Clara and the doctor met. So she takes credit for putting them together. And for seeing how the two of them would basically be toxic for each other. Um, but at least as far as I've gotten in the rewatch, she never tries to take credit for the specific events that result from that. Only that she thought putting them together would create a nice bit of chaos. So I don't think it falls under that trope. At least not, and not as far as I've gotten uh, in the rewatch. I'm submitting my application for the table read of the play. I don't know what part. I just want to be part of things. Joel, there's only two parts. And I love you, man. But you, I, unless you've got an insanely deep voice, uh, I, I think you're going to sound a little young for the, for the male role in that play. Wow, I am so far behind on this. This isn't even funny. BDSM. Oh, so this is talking about the play. BDSM or Fifty Shades BDSM? BDSM. Fifty Shades is not BDSM. Fifty Shades is wrong on many, 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 many levels that have been better dissected by other YouTubers, so I shall waste no more breath upon it. Uh, I'll read it live, and I've done a decent amount of stage acting. I am 1,000% serious. You folks say this. You haven't read it. Yeah. Uh, the second you said BDSM, I was on Amazon. <laughs> you kinky bastards. 
Uh, I should have just said I wrote a kink play ages ago, and you all you all would have bought it. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, I'm not, I haven't been ashamed, but I've been hesitant to talk about it. Um, I don't know why. I suppose just because I, I, I guess I try and keep my brand uh, or the Council of Geeks side of my brand uh, more or less family friendly. But, you know, I'm... I'm well hydrated tonight, so there you go. Okay, what the hell is that? That's in there. I gotta take my rings off to get this. This is bugging me. Eh. Oh, what is that? I have no idea what that is. It's just a black spot. <gasps> it's the curse of the black spot. The siren's coming for me. Okay. I have no idea what time it is. I'm going to keep it going. <laughs> Normally it's an hour. I'm having fun. I hope you are too. Let's be very clear about something. This... is a bad idea. I might be making a review video soon. Any advice? Um, be sure you talk about things that you are passionate about one way or the other that you either really like or really dislike. The hardest stuff to review is stuff that you are meh on. And uh, try not to rope yourself into anything long term if you are at all uncertain about being able to commit to it. So, like, don't start doing episode-by-episode episode reviews of something that you don't already know you're going to want to see through. Uh, you want to see your, so your show staged? I've got actors and camera equipment. I'll see what I can do. Hey, look. If somebody gets their hands on the play and wants to stage it, that's fine. But, like, I, I want to see video of a rehearsal at the very least. A drunk review of all six seasons of Glee. They even did an episode of Grease. Wow. Glee is a show that I have very deliberately avoided. <coughs> Excuse me. Wheezing with laughter about you watching Jersey Shore. Oh, my secret shame. Ah. I tend to watch shows based on cooking like Top Chef and Master Chef. See, the thing is, I don't consider those reality shows. I mean, I suppose they are. They're reality competitions. But I don't... That's not what I think of when I think reality show. And now I've got hiccups. Terrific. <gasps> I also re recently got into The Masked Singer for some reason. Nope, never seen that. That one. Oh, God. This... This is gonna be bad. <clears throat> oh, dang it. I was accompanied by my grandparents when I went to see Deadpool. That was awkward. Oh, yeah. <gasps> that, that, that would be. Oh, boy. Me, me hiccuping. Yeah, that's another thing that could be clipped out of con <gasps> context. <laughs> oh, God. This is bad. This is really bad. I always felt that there's a ton of potential for a BDSM-centered comedy, especially... With all the many, many niches. I mean, I know Netflix tried. I think I watched the first episode. I forget what it was called. It wasn't great. The problem is to really do, do it properly, you would have to get someone who really knows BDSM. Not someone who has just looked up a list, a list of kinks and is picking on them. Because there's stuff to be made fun of within the BDSM community, but... <laughs> I will always attest that the people best equipped to make fun of something are the people who love it. <laughs> the people who don't understand it that well will never be able to write jokes as good as people who know it inside and out. Uh. <gasps> oh my god, this is bad. <gasps> oh lord. What are your thoughts on Stephen King? I've actually never read his work directly. 
I, I tried, and uh, my, I, something about his writing style put me off. T2 for kids, for older kids, just about. Robocop is sadistic in places, so, so no. Yes, that's, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. Never mind not counting Lauren in your top 10 angel characters. Well, what about... What about Harmony? <laughs> I do enjoy Harmony. She's fun. Most embarrassing, awkward movie you saw with your parents? I actually don't have anything that leaps to mind at all for that. For that. Is, was the champagne. <laughs> champagne. Good. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm drinking water. Oh, God. Mm. <sighs> so tell me, have you seen Birdemic? No. I don't. And I won't. Unless somebody pays me. I'm not watching that thing. Which DuckTales do you prefer, new or old? The new. Which is, which is blasphemy for people my age, but it's true. Schwartz wrote Pippin, Godspell, and Wicked. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Okay, I don't know Pippin. I was in Godspell in high school, and I like Wicked. I have drinking horn, and I've used it frequently during virtual ha happy hours. Oh, drinking horn sounds awesome. I should put one of those, those on my Amazon wish list. Wish list. I should probably think about wrapping this up. I'm noticing that the number of viewers has... I started to go go down. I don't know if they presume it's because I'm wrapping up or if people are just getting sick of my, well, hydrated, hiccuping self. The Doctor Who audiobook I've been recording has started releasing. One of my friends is doing a fan. Oh, yeah. No, I read that. <coughs> I'm fun um, I'd fund the Kickstarter, but uh, I already don't have any free funds spent uh, that on Doctor Who. Fair enough. Did you get the first time Lord Victoria's Titan comic? Nope. My issue isn't that uh, I'm stuck on one story for years. It's that I can't even begin to decide what of my 105 plus, yeah, literally, stories to work on, not counting movies uh, and short film ideas. Just pick one. Like, seriously. Eliminate the... Eliminate... Eliminate the five that are the least likely to yield dividends... Go, go online. Find a find a random number generator to basically roll a hundred sided die, and just pick one. <clears throat> also happy that oh jeez, oh my god, these hiccups. Also happy that Sodheim September. Uh, everybody, I'm jamming to Company Sweeney. Into the woods and sunny the park with George, George all month. Very nice. You said Jody Whitaker instead of J.K. Rowling back then. Did I? Crap. Blame it on the water. There's a new animated film from Cartoon Saloon called, coming soon to Apple TV. It's called Wolf Walkers, and it looks like it has the potential to be a modern masterpiece. <laughs> That's great, but I don't have Apple TV. I'm not sure I'm up for springing for another service. <laughs> if any living doctor could read your book for Audible, who would you want? Ooh. Um. Like, I want to say Cavalli because he's my favorite, but I think the accent is going to be inscrutable um, over the whole run of the thing. Um. McGann. <laughs> he's got the silky voice. Easy reference list for play readers, actors who would be interested in Council of Geeks or my work. <laughs> oh, God. Are you seriously casting for my frigging BDSM kink play in the live st stream chat? That's awesome and amazing. You have the best glare when you responded to that Hellbent vs. Orphan 55 question. Curious, I personally rather watch Hellbent. Bent forever than Orphan 55, no question. I suppose if I was to actually answer that, uh, it would be Hellbent. Mainly because, I'm going to put this down. Before, 
before I spill it from hiccups. Um, I think mainly because um, I, I think part of me would like still be trying to figure out what the hell Moffat was thinking. Or as Orphan 55, I know exactly what they were thinking and it just didn't work. MPAA rating system sucks, but it was was worse with the production code. Oh yeah, no, agreed. The Hayes codes, the Hayes code. <laughs> was super bullshit. We're improving, you didn't yell at me. <laughs> Uh, Missy gets to have all the plans she wants. Like that time she went other undercover in a non-magical school and then a magical school. I'm assuming that was in one of the audios. What are your thoughts on Stand By Me from 1986? Good movie. Holds up well. Did you see the new Mandalorian images from this week? Nope. I uh, just hope the actual vid comes out before November. I'm trying not to imagine the future after that. Oh... Uh, November's a scary month this year. I took the line Missy says you would go to hell if she asked, and she did, as an indication that she somehow planned making the doctor look uh, for an afterlife um, cuz Danny. Um, I'm not sure I'd, I'd buy that. I mean, she was trying to lure the doctor in and was leaving breadcrumbs for him. I think she figured he'd find her eventually and was just waiting for whenever that was before she pulled the trigger. Uh, Fifty Shades is what wine moms think is BDSM. No, that's a, that is an insult to wine moms. So no, I reject that. Uh, oh, Nathaniel, just wondering, how are you faring with the mind blow <coughs> twist of Chapter 4 of Paper Mario, or have you not reached it yet? I haven't reached it yet. I just today reached the creepy, creepy steeple, I think it is. So I don't think I've gotten it yet. I've just been dealing with people turned into pigs. <coughs> oh my god, this is getting, like, parody level ridiculous. <coughs> Ah! Who read Fifty Shades of Grey better, George Takei or Gilbert Godfrey? Oh, Godfrey. He gave it the gravitas that it deserved. <laughs> if your play sells really well, suddenly is this now a BDSM <laughs> channel? <laughs> no, because the book was published under Vera Wilds. So the Vera Wilds channel would suddenly be a BDSM channel. Uh, have watched... Today, your very old Doctor Who videos, and there were some very interesting thoughts about female Who, like building it up and speculating. Yeah, I've left up the video about my initial very negative thoughts about the concept of a woman playing Doctor Who, which that video was put out years before Whitaker was cast. Uh, and I... I leave that up because it was an accurate representation of my f feelings at the time. And I think it's important to sort of leave up the fact that that was where I started and I sort of worked my way through my feelings by the time Jody actually started appearing in the role. Uh, weird question. <laughs> this, this live stream? No! But once quarantine is lifted fully and it's all behind us, would you ever do a live stream with Liz? I don't... I'm not sure live streaming is her bag. Like, I think... I forget when it was. There was one live stream I did where she was actually, like, sitting on the other side of the room while, while I did it. So it's, it's just not really her thing. Uh, the submission is barely, if even consensual, and, and it's stage is clearly not masochistic. Fifty Shades isn't BDSM, it's BS. Yes. Agreed. Uh, aside from, and that's not even getting into the fact that Fifty Shades of Grey equates BDSM with damage and abusive controlling relationships, which any, any healthy BDSM relationship is like any healthy vanilla relationship in that it is, it lives or dies on clear communication between those involved. And if that is not present, then it's not healthy. <laughs> and that's true of any relationship. Okay. 
Also, I'm interested to know what you think of the of the bad guy aliens. You know how some conservative people can be fun to be around unless you're in a group they hate. That times a th thousand. Well, I'll be curious to see when I get there. Um, oh, hang on. The chat jumped on me again. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god. This is this this is nuts. Uh What is your favorite movie from the Disney Renaissance? Little Mermaid. You have a cute hiccup. Thank you. Uh it was called Bonding. I actually enjoyed it. Not sure sure what that was in reference to. Bang, did that cure your hiccups? Mm, probably not. Please drink a glass of non-sparkling water. Hang upside down with a straw if you need help guaranteeing <coughs> hiccup cure. I know, but like I'd have to get up from the live stream and I'm not going to let you watch me try and do that. Everyone take a shot every time there's a, <coughs> there's a hiccup. No, you will be dead if you do that. Um, I also fell behind in my podcast when I came home because I usually listen to them in the car and haven't driven my own car until recently. How many shots does it take to get drunk? Depends on what it is. Um, me, these days, three will get me well tipsy. Four, four will probably get me plowed. I'm a lightweight now. I didn't used to be, but I am these days. I'm going to blame the, estro the estrogen on that. Uh, I'm saying for as long as you're hiccuping, it's delightful. You're going to be here a while. My issue isn't that I'm stuck on one story for years, it's that I can't even begin to say, oh, yeah. <laughs> you people were smart and repeated your questions as if I wasn't trying to hang back and <laughs> catch up on them. Oh, it's the thing I keep saying I'm gonna stop doing and I do it every time regardless. This is, oh, I feel like this live stream is becoming a disaster piece. Ah. Uh. Hiccup cure when you finish recording. Eat a spoonful of peanut butter. Oh, no. Ah. What will you do if you get really successful from this first installment? Probably um, prioritize the follow-up, which is, I don't know, probably 85% done the first draft. Pink elephants or heffalumps and woozles? Ah, uh, pink elephants. Pink elephants, please. What are your thoughts on Sound of Music? I actually haven't seen it all the way through start to finish. Blame it on the water. It needs to be on a t-shirt. I've already got the... I've already got... Um, this sucker on a t-shirt. I don't think I need two water t-shirts. Ah! I recently started helping my friend work on a comic. It's the crow reimagined as a woman. Oh! Nice. That's true. The crow always was done as a man, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Do you play D&D? &D? I haven't in a while. Uh, I love it. My character is a gender fluid, swashbuckling sea elf pirate rogue. Nice. Last character I, I, last character I played was a half-orc barbarian. Um, I forget what the other... My, my gaming group, which hasn't met in years at this point, because the guy who used to host now has kids. So it all got more complicated. But we didn't always do D&D. &D. Like, he he hosted a Star Wars uh, role-play game where I was uh, I was an astro droid. Uh, a um, a uh, Lovecraft one where I died, I think, three times. I was on my third character for that. It, we did Transformers at one point where my Transformer changed into a DeLorean. And I was required to say my catchphrase, um, 1.21 gigawatts of whoop-ass every time I transformed. Um, so we, we gamed a bit, but, but we only did D&D, &D, I think, the once. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And now a reminder that in your fate, that, you're, that in your fate is a doctor in distress video. <laughs> Part of me wonders if I should record that right after this while hiccuping and hydrated. 
Oh dear. Missy was a reference to her other roles. She was in a trash UK sitcom called Bad Education and then Sabrina. I know she's on Sabrina. Uh, Liz is trying to get me to, to try Sabrina. She, know, she knows she won't get me onto Riverdale. Why don't we make this a 24-hour stream? No! <laughs> no! You're going to get me killed. And the Tony for best book of play goes to When She Wakes. Oh, the Tonys wouldn't touch that thing with a 12-foot pole. Uh, that, that had a violet wand on the end of it. Uh... Since I know what your favorite horror film is, I wonder if that has ruined <gasps> Amazing Grace being played as Spock's uh, funeral forever. Mm, no, that still works. But yeah, there there is a <gasps> creepy overtone there. Uh, are there any BDSM videos on Vera's channel? Not as yet. There, <sighs> there will be. Don't promise as to when, because... For what I want to do with it, it's going to be a beast to shoot. But there will be. Oh, God. I don't think the breadcrumbs were planted by Missy. People like the robots and the clockwork cyborg were looking for it without prompting from her. I watched Doctor in Distress for the first time. I don't get what everyone's whinging about. Well, I'll find out one of these days. Who do you think would... Uh, would work better as the doctor. Judy Dench or Anzer Angela? 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 Angela Lansbury. Um, between those two, I mean, like, I would happily see either of those. But I, I am going to favor Dame Judy for that one. I love that Angela Lansbury is still alive, though. Oh. Don't let, don't let my having said, said that jinx it, please. Ay, ay, ay. What are your thoughts on High School Musical? I've only seen the first one. It's not bad. It's not great. But it's not bad. Um, I love how many fans hated the Doctor becoming a wo woman when Sydney, when Sydney Newman suggested making the Doctor a woman in the late 80s when they were looking for the seventh doctor. Was that publicly known that he did that though? Like, I know that was brought up when Whitaker was eventually cast, but like, was that public knowledge that he was suggesting that back then? I don't remember hearing that. <gasps> oh God. Thank you, Tracy. God, you're so friggin' generous. And the rest of you are also nice and indulging. Are there any classic villains that have not been brought back yet for Classic Who that you think would work well in New Who? <gasps> Omega! Come on! Just... Come on! I, I, I remember hearing somewhere, and I haven't looked into it because... It would be research. Uh, but I remember hearing somewhere that there's an issue with the estate of the writer who created him. Um, that either they're, they want too much money or too much control for bringing him back into the TV show. I don't know if that's true. But if it's not, friggin' just do it! Come on! He's like the only major recurring villain of Classic Who who hasn't come back yet. They've been bringing back one-time characters. They brought back friggin' Alpha Centauri. <laughs> and they haven't brought back Omega. The hell? The hell? Oh God, are they gone? Are they gone? I think they're gone. <sighs> wonder of wonder, miracle of miracles. 
Okay. A second holding your breath for 30 seconds. Uh, apparently, I just needed to rant about Omega. Uh, a Christmas Story, Home Alone, or Elf? A uh, Christmas Story, then Home Alone, then Elf. The, the tail end of Elf loses me a little bit. You may skip this at in training for your relearning to not answer every question you're given. Charleston, that was cruel. Have you uh, watched Torchwood or Sarah Jane Adventures? And if you have, what are your thoughts on them? I've seen the first three series of Torchwood. I have not seen Miracle Day. I did, I have, like, the first two series of Torchwood are so up and down. They are so all over the place. Sometimes it's great. A lot of the times it's mess. Sometimes it is painful. Children of Earth is amazing and dark, and it hurt me, like, deeply. Um, Sarah Jane Adventures I did the first two seasons of, and it was fine. It was very clearly aimed at a much younger demographic than Doctor Who, and that's fine. That's good, even, but that also means it wasn't really for me, and I didn't connect with it that much. But it was fine. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Somebody had a recommendation for what to do for my hiccups that they just... Message is now retracted. What are your hobbies? Um, that's... That's a good question because it used to be that YouTube was my hobby. But now it's kind of my living. I don't know what my hobbies are now. I'm having an existential crisis all of a sudden over the fact that I just realized I don't have a thing to do with my spare time. Because the thing I do with my spare time is now the thing that makes my living. It's my work day. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was a really simple question that just blew my mind. Can I just say for the record, this is the best live stream I watch. Good. I'm glad somebody's enjoying it. You made my day mainly your adorable hiccups and adorable laugh. Thank you for making me smile. I am happy to help. What's your opinion of Transformers War for Cybertron? I have none. Uh, all right, where did I leave off? Uh, what are your thoughts on Jim Carrey's The Grinch and Mike Myers' Cat in the Hat? Jim Carrey's The Grinch was painful. Mike Myers' Cat in the Hat I refuse to watch. So unless somebody pays me, I will never see it. Looking back, what are your thoughts now on Good Omens? The book or the show? Show's great. Book was good. I haven't, re although to be fair, I haven't reread the book. I read the book in high school um, because I knew it was Douglas Adams esque. Uh, and I quite enjoyed it. And I thought the show was great. So thumbs up to both of them, which makes it two thumbs up. Hey, that was a little lousy. There will be BDSM videos on Vera's channel. <laughs> Subscribed. <laughs> the... We'll see if I remember later on to check to see if there was a sudden subscriber spike today to coincide with a bunch of people from this chat with me saying I will at some point do a BDSM video over there suddenly subscribing to that channel. That would amuse me greatly. I don't expect it to be the case, but that would amuse me greatly. Uh, Vera, I'd tell you to... Oh, thank you, Carolyn. Sorry, thank you. So, thank you so much. I appreciate you greatly. You are wonderful. So, tomorrow is not going to be the standard Take Two Doctor Who review. Tomorrow I am taking part in a collaborative um, event called One Fantastic Scene. You might remember last year there was one excellent scene where a bunch of different geeky YouTube channels um, talked about their favorite scenes from an X-Men movie. 
This is going to be a bunch of WhoTube channels talking about their favorite scene from Christopher Eccleston's time uh, as the Doctor. Now, it's going to be done as a premiere tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I actually had the time wrong before um, in my head because they had told me the time and I didn't account for the fact that the person who organized it, Shabogan Who, is in the UK and the time he gave me was UK time. I didn't backtrack it. Um, but what it's going to be is 9.30 a.m. premiere for my contribution to one fantastic scene. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate you immensely. Uh, let's see. Saying a BDSM video uh, will be a beast to shoot made me think it's going to be an adult video. Not quite to that level. Probably. See, now part of me is, is tempted to do like a director's cut version of the video that I'm planning to do. Oh, dear. Oh, God, if the hiccups start up again, so help me. Have you watched Musical Theater MASH? He's a YouTube channel I think you guys could get along. I have not. Thank you, Ben. Even though you retracted whatever your message was, I appreciate the help. Did you watch Sesame Street going up? Oh, yeah. Grover was my favorite. All the way. Joanna Lumley uh, was floated for the doctor when Tom Baker was stepping down, so it's not remotely new. Oh! So her being in... Um, Curse of the Fatal Death was like also an inside joke in addition to ha ha what if the doctor was a woman in two years you'll be 40 shut your mouth that is not true in a year and a half I'll be 40 uh, Omega cured your hiccups yes apparently I was talking to a friend who's only seen Buffy and not seen Angel. He said he didn't like Darla. I hope that changes. I mean, I I have friends who don't really care for her. Liz doesn't like her that much, actually. Um, let's see. God damn it, somehow redacted my message. You should definitely watch Doctor in Distress now. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Children of Earth hurt you? Yeah, you really shouldn't listen to my audio series. Oh, dear. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, I'm almost caught up. Mm, do you ever refer to anyone as darling? I don't think I do. Not, not to my conscious, hazy knowledge. Ever heard of the pre-code Hollywood era? It was a brief period from 1929 to 1934 when the code was poorly enforced and anything went in Hollywood. Yes, I am familiar. I don't think I've ever seen any films specifically from that era, but I do know about it. Your hobbies are going to a winery with Liz and not me. <laughs> that, like, that's not a hobby. That's a couple's outing. That's, that's, that's a little different. And I don't do it frequently enough for it to be a hobby. Although I do it fairly frequently. Who is your favorite immortal in the old guard? The, the, the I, names have completely escaped me. The two guys who were a couple, both of them together. I'm not splitting them up. And only counting one, I'm counting them both. I'm currently doing a rewatch of I, Claudius, really worth watching if you want to see the War Doctor and War Master as Roman emperors. I have a, I have a friend on um, the podcast network that Tough Like a Girl is on, the Fire and Water Podcast Network, Rob. He loves I, Claudius. It's like his favorite thing ever. I still haven't seen it. I know what your new hobby can be, even more She-Ra. <laughs> uh, one of these days, I'd love to see a podcast devote itself to pre-code films beyond a single episode topic in other film podcasts. Maybe I should create one myself. Go for it. I honestly believe that 80% of podcasts are created by somebody going, boy, I wish someone would make a podcast of it, and then just saying, screw it and do it themselves. Uh, 
Second best live stream. First for me was 2019. Uh, uh, was tw 2019 New Year's one because uh, of <laughs> end notes. Uh, I don't even remember now. Your favorite horror then is points and screams. Yes. Very wise. I can't do the scream right. Nobody can because it's an after effect. Uh, do your old job as a hobby. Fuck no. Never. Uh, let's see. There will be a BDSM video on Vero's channel. Subscribe second. <laughs> uh, you got me through lockdown for real. Oh, Felix, thank you. I, I, if anything I do helps anybody in any way, even if it is only to make for a nice way to pass the time, that is honestly a wonderful thing to me. I've watched the channel for years now, but I've started watching Doctor Who two weeks ago. Wow. Started with Series 1, New Doctor. Now on Series 3, I so miss Eccleston. But Who is great. Yes, it is all great. And I'll have my video giving my little praise of my favorite moment from Eccleston's time up tomorrow. I, I, got, I, I slid two plugs right in there. Nice and snug. Uh, that was so... Have you ever been to Broadway Con? No. Cannot say that I have. I did not know that was a thing. There's nothing wrong with being 40. I certainly hope not, because it's coming. If you watched Sesame Street growing up, did you see the controversial episode where Margaret Hamilton reprised her, ro her, ro her, road? her role as Wicked Witch of the East? I did not. Ah. Uh, Vera Wilde and Lin-Manuel Miranda collaborate to make a hip-hop musical about the invention of BDSM starring Anthony Ramos and Sutton Foster. You guys are having a lot of fun without me. I'm not even sure I need to be here. Start singing, you've got a friend in me. Oh, dear. And I won't sing any more than that because I've had, I've had these things get disrupted by the friggin' bots. Because I sang more than a bar. Any bad movie recommendations? Having some friends over on Friday. My first choice is currently Wicker Man with Nick Cage. That works. My personal recommendation? Ice and Fire. By uh, uh, Rob Bakshi. It's so bad. It's, it, it, is, it is left out of too many so bad it's funny conversations. I recommend that one. Do you plan on watching The Boys? I really don't. I don't like Warren Ellis. I'm sorry. I don't. The guy who plays Homelander is such an amazing actor. Truly scary every time he's on screen. I mean, that's great. I just... I don't like the writer. I just... I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Queen or The Beatles? Queen. Fight me. Did you read any of the Buffy comics? Yes, I read all of season eight. It wasn't good. So I did not keep going after that. Gina thing, it'll tell us how you really feel about your old job. <laughs> you don't want to hear how I really feel about my old job. You don't. Uh, thank you for this evening. It's been wonderful. Good night. Yeah, other people are signing off. Maybe I should take that as a clue sometime soon. Uh, oh, John! Look at you mingling with the locals and skirting by under the radar, you sneaky bugger. Uh, any books that you'd love to see adapted for film or TV? Um, I'd like to see... Uh, Somebody take a crack at Christopher Moore's work, to be honest. And, like, not skimp on the weird. I would personally do um, the Bloodsucking Fiends 
Bite Me You Suck trilogy as a TV series. Uh, are you sure this channel isn't a BDSM channel already? Uh, you asked us to be your subs and keep inserting plugs. Ah, uh, you people do me proud. Margaret Hamilton was the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know who she was. I still never saw that episode of um, Sesame Street. Recently watched a film called Little Joe about a flower that changes people's personality. Very Body Snatchers-esque. Ooh, that sounds creepy. Uh, what are your thoughts on The Lost Boys? Oh, it's fun. That's a good movie. Legitimately, I really do like that. When will you review In the Forest of the Night? I whenever the weekly schedule of the Take Two review gets to it. I will tell you, I've already shot my review for In the Force of the Night. I don't know how far down the line it goes up because I'm hydrated and I'm not going to do the math on that right now. Actually, you know what? Hold on. I've got my docket up. Or I, I've got it here and I can pull it up. So, In the Forest of the Night... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's just going to be next week. I just got bumped one week. Everything just got moved forward one week because of the um, one fantastic scene thing. Uh, there's a scene where a woman has her dog put down because that was not my dog. Oh, my God. All right, I'm, all, I'm already unsettled just from that. So bad it's good recommendation. The swarm with Michael Caine supposed to be seriously is supposed to be seriously supposed to be serious went horribly wrong in an amazingly bizarre way. Hmm. I am gonna have to wrap this up soon. My phone's battery is dying. What is your favorite Queen song? Oh God. Um. I don't even know. It changes day to day. There's like there's so many good ones. I t this is awful. I tend to come back to Fat Bottom Girls as like my comfort food queen song. They make the rock and world go around. Uh, no need to apologize. We all like different things. No one has to like everything. Oh, good. That's a relief. You look good tonight. Oh, Anna. Thank you. I sneak just just for you. Uh, need another movie night? Yes, that would be that would be very cool. We'll we'll try and not now. Don't try and get planning out of me right now. Uh, um, yeah, I'd love uh, I'd love it if you stayed on the live stream all night. But I really need a piss. I actually kind of do too. So like, I am gonna wrap this up soon. I'm almost caught up though. I swear. You are always BDSM, Buffy, Doctor Who, Star Wars, and more. <laughs> nice. I like it. What are your thoughts on Say Anything? I have not seen it. A friend of mine even gave me a copy as like a gift. I never got around to it. Have you seen Dominic Noble's Fifty Shades review? You mean reviews, plural, because he did three videos devoted to every single one of those books and movies. Yes, I have. And they're amazing. So are uh, Folding Ideas. Uh, videos on them both very good both worth watching looking forward to the dune 2020 trailer today is that dropping today uh i guess i am now uh let's see just say it once uh not now chat mummy is hydrating then take us <laughs> not now chat mummy's hydrating There you go. McCavity, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we, we are gonna we are gonna wrap up soon. This is gone. This is gone very long. I uh, remembered you looking upset unsettled when I brought up the Twilight Zone movie accident last time. Should John Landis have been punished more than he was for that? 
I don't know. I don't know enough about the circumstances to make that call one way or the other. I I feel like the fact that the that even though they didn't they they never processed the film that showed the death. I think the fact that that section of the movie was even released is kind of ghoulish. And I kind of wish they hadn't. Uh okay. I am almost caught up. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can't stay on the live stream all the time. You've got to watch Doctor in Distress and put it in the break room, please. All right, look. Ugh. Calm yourself. Momo says miss you here. Aw. Thank you, John. Night to Momo. Night to, um, to Kay. And night to you. And night to everyone. I'm caught up. I caught up on questions. I'm done. Ha <laughs> I am victorious. Don't post more stuff and tempt me to stay. I gotta go. So thank you everybody for tuning in thank you actually you know what i am going to do the foolish thing and pop onto the kickstarter and see where we sit right now so hold on holy crap holy crap um oh my god it is um, it is less than $150 from hitting its goal, and it, it hasn't even been up for 12 hours. <laughs> oh. Oh god damn it. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Well, it, um, not to count my chickens before they hatched, but I think this is a very good shot at hitting the, um, the goal. I gotta, I gotta be prepared to lay out stretch goals, I think. I tend to undercut in my head the level of support that I have uh, from people who I don't know, you know, personally, uh, that I've never met. I, my brain automatically uh, rounds that down. I think as a defense mechanism. And then every now and then I get a reminder that um, people care and like what I do and have faith in what I want to put out into the world and um, this is not the first time this has happened this happened when my first Kickstarter got funded this happened when um, the massive bump to my Patreon happened after I was laid off This is just the first time that it's happening um, live. <sighs> Do 
so, and the fact that I've said that I've had this reaction before, uh, it's not, it's not just the water. Though that might be um, amplifying it a little bit. Thank you. If you're backing the Kickstarter, thank you. If you are backing me on Patreon, thank you. If you are just watching this and aren't financially supporting me at all in any way, shape, or form, thank you. I'm a cynical person by nature, but I don't ignore wonderful things when they happen. And all of you, the supporters, the viewers, the sharers, everybody, you give me so much hope. And so much strength and so much joy. You make it possible to do what I do. And I never thought I'd have this. I really never did. Thank you all so much. If you're watching this, whether you're watching it live, whether you're playing it back, if you're watching this, if you're seeing this at all, at any point ever, thank you. Oh, Jesus. It just jumped. Now it's only $24 short of the goal. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. You don't need to see me blubber anymore. Uh. Thank you all. And there are super chats that I know happened while I was uh, breaking down. Good night. Looking forward to the book. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Ozma. Thank you, everyone who is here. And please remember, and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, you are beautiful, you are valid, you are loved. You are loved. You are the council. You make this possible. I just run the meetings. So, until next time, this council is adjourned. <sighs>